Hey guys, Ben here from Lion and Bear Woodworking. Today I'm going to be making a hedgehog house. I'll show you how I've made it and a few of the really cool features that I've added to it. And you'll want to stick around to the end because believe it or not, as soon as I got finished doing this project, a special little visitor came round. Keep watching and you'll see at the end. As with all my projects lately, I got myself a 4x2 CLS board or 38mm by 89mm depending where you get it from. And I ripped it down the middle on the table saw to effectively give me two 2x2 two two boards. A rip cut is just a long cut along the length of a board. Next up, I needed to cut four long pieces and four shorter pieces for my frame. And I decided that rather than trying to work out angles ahead of time, I was just gonna do them by eye once I had the rest of the frame built. Once I cut the pieces I needed on the mitre saw, I applied a bit of exterior grade wood glue and screwed them together with exterior wood screws. I used these little right angle clamping squares to get it all lined up properly. Although I think I could do with some slightly bigger ones. So if anyone out there has any recommendations, please put them in the comments so I can check them out. Once I had the bottom frame and my four uprights done, I added the front and back cross pieces. You can hopefully tell that I've done one end taller than the other. This is so that I can create a sloping roof. And I've got a good idea for how I can make some really cool roof tiles as well. Speaking of a sloping roof, I made sure to keep a couple of lengths of 2x2 two two long enough to overlap on either end of the top of my frame. Then I turned it upside down so I could mark off the angles on the wood itself. I'm sure there's a proper way to work out angles like this, but I'll be stuffed if I could be bothered to learn it. In woodworking, there's usually two ways to do things. The proper way, and then the way I do it. So once I've marked my scientific angle, I used an equally unscientific method to find out what angle was on my mitre saw. It essentially just involved tapping the angle along until it looked about right. Then I made a cut slightly longer than my line and decided if it looked good enough. It did, so I locked it in and made my cut to the line. I flipped the board over and did the same on the other end. And hey presto, it fit, no mass required. I then just glued and screwed both sides into place in the same way I did with the other pieces. A long clamp comes in very handy just to hold everything in place while you drive the screws home. Just don't clamp over where you're gonna put your screws. Don't ask how I know. Now, I'm making this hedgehog house for my mum's birthday present as it's what she asked me to do. So naturally, being an absolute mummy's boy, I wanted to make sure that I went a little bit over and above what should be a fairly easy project. So firstly, I decided to buy myself a pack of V-jointed tongue and groove general purpose cladding. I could have used this as a good excuse to buy some new router bits and make it all myself, but I decided that this way was far simpler. So I measured out the length of my frame and cut the pieces to size. I did the same for the ends as well, but I'd mistakenly measured the end of the frame exactly for my first end piece. It was only when I test fit it that I realized it was supposed to be longer to accommodate for the thickness of the front and the back cladding. Fortunately, I noticed it and adjusted my mitre saw stop block accordingly before moving on to cut the rest of the pieces. It meant that as I only had enough cladding to make the exact amount of boards I needed that I did have to use this board, but I planned to cover the corners up anyway, so it wouldn't be the end of the world, fortunately. And then I needed to mark out the angle of the top. Again, rather than figure it out, I simply held the cladding up against the frame where I needed it and drew a line following the shape of the framework. You'll see it goes at a smooth angle and then straightens off to cover the end element, so I can cut the straight angle using a straight line on my track saw, but I'll need to use a jigsaw for the turn. So I set up my track saw, lined it all up, made sure it was raised enough for the blade to go through, so I used these little gripper blocks, which I love and use all the time. And then I made the cut. And then I did the same on the other piece. And then I just used my jigsaw to cut the bit on the end. To attach the clad into the frame, I'm simply using some more exterior grade screws. These will all be covered up later. For the rest of the features, I'm going to be using this really nice apili that I salvaged from an old staircase that was being torn out from someone's house. I can't believe someone was willing to just get rid of this. It was going to go on a burn pile. I'd already planed the top and the bottom to get the paint off it, so it was just a case of running the edges through the table saw to remove the rounded, painted edges. And I had some lovely clean boards. I didn't need anything as thick as this, so I wanted to resaw them. Resawing is just when you cut a board down across the face grain from end to end to get thinner boards out of it. I figured I could get three thinner boards from every piece I had, so I set the blade to just over halfway through the board height and then ran it through. I flipped it over and ran it through again. Then I did exactly the same again until I had three boards from one. I kept doing this until I had enough for all the features I was going to make. I'm going to use these boards for the edge trim as well as the roof tiles, but for the edge trim I didn't need them to be so wide. So I ripped them down on the table saw and this gave me narrower pieces I could use for my trim. 
However, they were still too long, so I measured the areas I wanted to trim and then cut them to length on the miter saw. To attach them, I went with brad nails as they're purely cosmetic, so I don't need to have any strength built in. Then I moved on to the roof tiles. I'll explain why in a sec, but I set my table saw blade to a random angle that I thought worked. I set the fence a few millimetres away from the blade and then raised the blade enough that it would cut through the board without leaving a lip on it. Then I ran my boards through on their edge, which gave me this angle along one edge. Once I confirmed I was happy with it, I ran the rest through and this is how they turned out. Thicker on one end with a slope on the other. I then did one more board, but instead of just putting the angle on one edge, I flipped it over and did it on the other edge as well. This will be used for the very top piece. Here they are lined up on the top, and as you can see, the angle means that any rain that falls will naturally fall down to the next tile, and then run down until the end of the roof. What I don't want though is for any rain to run down between one board and the next, as they'd end up with a very soggy hedgehog. So what I'm going to do is rebate it in ever so slightly, so that the rain will continue to trickle down in the direction I want, and not into the house directly. So to do this, I set my table saw blade to the height of the thinnest angled piece and set my fence to the same distance away, making sure to account for the thickness of the blade. Then I ran the thickest edge through vertically at first and then horizontally, which cut a little notch, which is called a rebate, out of the bottom edge of each of my boards. And this is how it looks. In theory now, it should all sit flat. So I laid them all out on the workbench just to check and I was really happy with how it turned out. Hopefully you're enjoying the video, and if you are, can I just ask you a favour to hammer the like button for me? I really appreciate it. Now, I needed to figure out how to attach the roof so that it can be removable and can slot over the hedgehog house without the whole roof sliding around all over the place. My idea was to lay the hedgehog house on top of the roof slats with it all upside down and I can mark out where a couple of battens need to go. I cut these to the same angle and just slightly shorter than the diagonal pieces I did for the frame and then this way it should slot in and hold steady but not be too tight to fit. Once I've done this and established how long I wanted my roof tiles, I cut them all to length on the mitre saw using a stop block to ensure that they were all exactly the same length. I laid them all out nice and neatly and look how nice they all go together. Pretty happy with that. Before attaching anything I decided to give them all a quick sand and went through the grits up to about 120 just to make sure I got all the saw marks off. I toyed with a variety of different ways to attach the top to the battens and if I've marked them all when it was upside down and then just ran my batten across that line, I've probably been fine. But as I mentioned earlier, there's a proper way and then there's my way. So I decided to place all the pieces on top in exactly the same place I wanted them and then I taped them tightly in place so that they wouldn't move. Then I carefully flipped the whole thing upside down. Who's taking bets on whether they all stay in place next? Oh, oh, is he gonna make a mess? Oh, no, no problem. Be honest, which ones of you doubted me and thought they were all gonna fall off? Yeah, me too. <laughs> then it was just a case of pre-drilling through the battens into the roof tile, being careful not to go too deep and then countersinking each one before driving home more exterior screws that I've measured beforehand to make sure that it wouldn't poke through the top. Right, now that it's got a roof, I guess I should put a floor in. Don't want hedgehogs getting chilly feet now, do we? I had some pallet wood for this, and due to a complete lack of forward planning, but a ridiculous amount of dumb luck, it turned out that the inside width of my hedgehog house meant I could cut the nail holes off my pallet pieces and they'd be pretty much exactly the right size for my floor pieces. Sometimes my luck amazes me. I just worry for the day it runs out. Anyway, I needed to notch out the first and the last piece. I started at this end and measured and marked out where I needed to notch out on either end of the board using my combination square, which makes getting an internal measurement like this a breeze. Then I just cut them out with my jigsaw. I ended with a nice tight fit, which was perfect. And then I cut the other pieces to length on the mitre saw and then just laid them in place. I then measured out how much was left at the other end ripped it to size and notched it out in exactly the same way. Now I did secure these with a screw in the center of each board and you can just about see me doing this behind the back of my arm there. It's a good job nobody watches these videos or they'd think I'm a proper idiot. Right, I've got the frame done, cladding done, trim done, roof done, floor done. So what else does a hedgehog house need? Oh yes, a way to get into the bloody thing. I didn't just make a hole and call it a day though. Oh no. I decided this needed to appeal to a very fancy hedgehog, so stay tuned to see what I'm going to do. So before all that, I did need to cut a hole for the door. 
So I marked it out using my T-square and kind of just figured out what I thought would look right and what proportions made sense. I need to make sure that the entrance is high enough to get over the frame and the flooring. So I checked my measurements, made any amendments to my marking out and then drilled pilot holes for my jigsaw. And then I just ran around the lines with the jigsaw until I had an opening. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Ben, you just cut that hole out in line with the flooring, which makes sense, but how are the hedgehogs gonna get their impossibly tiny legs all the way up there? Well, fear not, because I've got a plan for that. It involves this offcut of Sapili. I'm gonna make some adorable little hedgehog steps. So this is plenty deep enough for what I want. So I'm just gonna measure it, divide it by three, making sure to account for the saw curve, which is just the thickness of the saw blade once it's cut through, and then cut a third off it on the table saw, which leaves me with these two pieces, which makes a lovely little step. And once again, my done luck has come into play as they happen to be the exact thickness to meet the bottom of the doorway. I genuinely have no idea how this stuff happens, but I'm going with it. I also ripped down a thin strip from some of the leftover trim to give me a nice strip to frame the doorway with, which I think will look really nice. So I just marked up how high I needed it, and then I cut them on the mitre saw using the stop block again. Then I used some exterior grade glue and stuck the door frame pieces in place, taking care to make sure that they were square to the steps, and then I fired in a few brad nails for good measure. I then glued the steps and secured them to each other with a few screws. Now, what this hedgehog clearly needed next was a little porch roof so the hedgehogs don't get wet when they're fumbling around looking for their keys to get in after a hard day's work doing whatever hedgehogs do. I guess, playing in hedges? So in order to do this, I set an angle on my table saw and ran some more of that sapili through, and then I glued it on and screwed it from the other side. I also screwed the steps into the frame while I was at it. Now, during my research of what a hedgehog looks for in a house, I read that they do need to be safe from predators. So I cut this piece of wood that essentially turns the front section into a corridor with a turn on the opposite end that's a bit narrower so that the hedgehog can go into the main area and not have to worry about foxes and things like that reaching in and taking a swipe at him. I mean, who wants a fox coming into your bedroom at night? Actually, on second thought, I debated whether or not to add a finish to this as it'll obviously protect the wood but I didn't want anything toxic that might be bad for the hedgehogs. But after a bit of research I found that Danish oil seems to be okay and it will give a little bit of protection. So I wiped on a few coats of that and it really made the different wood types pop. So here it is, the finished hedgehog house. I really like the contrasting colour between the pine and the sapili. I love this little front porch thing. It's going to attract a really high quality class of hedgehog coming into this house. And I really like the way that these shiplap style roof tiles worked out as well. Dead easy to make and have a really nice effect. If you enjoyed this project or you like tool reviews, beginners projects, tips and advice, then you want to subscribe to the channel. But if you want to check out another video, then I've lined one right up here for you that I think you'll like next. See you next time.